Gabrielle, you I'm Lamar Pitts, and this is my dad, Greg Pitts. We go all around the world covering community service, places to go, places to shop, places to eat, not to mention we record our lives on a daily basis. So to see our perception of the 21st century, join us in Lamar Pitts TV. Stay tuned for more. send out two waves of planes to strike in tandem with five midget submarines launched from large submarines stationed south of Oahu. It was a bold gamble. Oahu was the home of the American fleet, the strategic hub of the entire Pacific. The island was rich in targets, but the attack faced the formidable air power of Oahu's six airfields. Yet 350 planes now soared toward the island. So far, no one had come. To stop them. It was a quiet Sunday morning at Pearl Harbor, but there were signs. Warnings had come from Washington, war with Japan was imminent. Many expected a Japanese attack, but not here, not on a walk. During that morning, the American destroyer Ward spotted a partially submerged craft outside the harbor. It was one of the midget submarines. The Ward fired twice. And upon passing, dropped a barrage of four depth charges. A few minutes later, 7.02 a.m., two privates at the Opana radar station saw a bright spike rise on the screen. The sighting was the biggest that they had ever seen. But a lieutenant told them not to worry. Some B-17 bombers were due in from the U.S. mainland. That was probably all it was. Not far away, Commander Mitsuo Fuchida, leading the first wave of 183 planes, knew he was close to Oahu, but clouds blocked his view. Then suddenly, there it was. 
blue water, white surf, an island like a green jewel. Minutes later, Fujita spotted it through his binoculars, over 185 vessels, a row of battleships tethered in pairs. It was 7.53. Fujita's radio man transmitted a coded telegraph message. Tora, Tora, Tora. It meant complete surprise achieved. Thank you. 